from the Tie Cats Audio Network. This is Tie Cats Today with Louis Butko. Yes, it is Tie Cats Today for a Tuesday, October the 25th, 2022. Thanks for checking us out on the Tie Cats Audio Network. Louis Butko here with you from day one of practice at the Tie Cats regular season finale. That is on Saturday against the Ottawa Red Blacks. And, uh, interesting week at practice uh, I've heard coach say many times uh, the most important game is the next one and I'm not sure if that's the case uh, I'll ask coach that question or I I should say I did ask coach that question we'll have his answer coming up uh, later on in the show we'll also hear from Sean Thomas Erlington more on him in just a second we'll hear from Dane Evans and from the Hamilton Spectator Steve Milton gonna be by uh, there's lots to get into with him when it comes to this Ticats team, as yes, they are getting set for the playoffs. They do have one more game to go in the regular season, uh, but of course, November 6th, the East semifinal, the uh, big one circled on the calendar for the Ticats. Not that they're overlooking the Red Blacks, not that they're not thinking about this game or that they're not going to try and win this game, uh, but I think like the fans, they understand that there is a even more important game the following week, uh, that being next Sunday in the East semifinal. So it'll be an interesting storyline to watch this week. Who plays, who doesn't, who rests, uh, how much do they show? Uh, it's interesting. And uh, Coach will get into that when we uh, catch up with him uh, later on in the show, as we always do. And as a reminder, full scrums are available at tightcats.ca. And if you're on tightcats.ca, you might see splashed along the top that Sean Thomas Erlington who we'll hear from in just a second, has been named one of the league's top performers for week 20. He had 13 carries for 104 yards in the Ticats win at home on Friday night. It's also the second 100-yard rusher of the season after Wes Hills had 134 against the Ticats earlier this month. Uh, it's, it was an all-running back uh, top performer as James Butler and Dedrick Mills Rounded out the top performers in first and third, respectively. Uh, interesting stat. The Ticats have played three games in the last four weeks. And in those three games, in fact, those three weeks, uh, in week 18, the Ticats had two players. In week 19, the Ticats had two players. Uh, and this week, the Ticats had one. So uh, at five of the last nine top performers have been Ticats. And surely, no coincidence, the Ticats have uh, played very well in those football games. All wins. Uh, to get them into the playoffs. All right, speaking of the playoffs, how does Coach O approach this week? And uh, as we've heard him say many times, the most important game is the next one. Wanted to know if that was the case this week. Here's what he had to say after practice. Uh, that's an interesting question. It, it definitely, we uh, every time we prepare, we're preparing to win. So it is important because this is, we're not, we don't want to miss a growth opportunity. And, you know, we, we've worked hard to claw and scratch to get this opportunity. And, you know, we don't need any relapse. We want everybody to continue to get better. That's the approach we took at practice. So it is, it is the most important game. I do understand the, the, the point of your question. Um, you know, there's a lot of quote unquote uh, from the outside in games that don't affect the standings, but they're, they're never meaningless games. There's always something to be taken from it, every, any game you play. Well, there's so much that goes into it, right? There's, um, it's just not as simple as clearing your, 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 our waiting room and putting everybody in, right? So that would mean that, you know, a third of your team or more doesn't get to rest. So how do you choose? And so it's always uh, an interesting decision uh, that comes up and you're not always afforded uh, the luxury of resting everybody that you'd like to rest. So. As we approach this game, we've told everybody to prepare like they're going to play. And uh, did, you know, only a certain amount of people will make the trip to Ottawa, but the preparation should never change. Yeah, I think each position is unique in that way. And I think each year, uh, Steve, is different. Uh, you just kind of have to know your football team. You have to know the individual player. And then you also, you know, you got to be smart. Like, do you, do you play somebody just because you're worried about what you really don't know, which is possible rust? Um, and, and that's just kind of the thing, or do you, you know, it works both ways. I, I equate it to this. When, when you're in a preseason game, if you play some veterans and they get hurt, you get ridiculed for why are they out there? And then if they don't play and they don't play, play well week one, you say, don't you think they should have got some time? 
And so it's, that's always, you know, what we get paid to make those decisions. And I'd say each case is uh, different individually. Yeah, I mean, everybody in that picture is a 2022 Tiger Cat. Um, it's just one of those things you go through. I, I know what you're alluding to. I think we know who we are at this point in time. Uh, I know we're not, we haven't arrived. I know that there's so much growth to be had. And, and it starts, you know, like, like it stays with the process. It still starts in the meeting room and, and taking it out to practice and supporting one another uh, and pushing each other as coaches too. And so uh, we don't rest uh, behind the walls either. It's not just about resting on the field. We, we push each other uh, in the classroom also. Well, we've won. And I think that's the most critical stat. Uh, we found ways to win despite uh, overcoming some adversity, be it uh, turnovers. We took the ball away. Um, and I think that's what the biggest difference is. We, we, um, we, we didn't do that well in the first two thirds of the season or consistently. And we've done a little bit more consistently lately, but man, there's so much, there's so much room for growth uh, with this football team that uh, I'm excited about what's ahead. That is the head coach and president of football ops, Orlando Steinauer, after practice today and uh, talking about picture day. Because uh, before practice today, guys getting all nice and uh, nice and ready for uh, the big picture day, like first day of school. So it was nice to see them down there and uh, tried to, I don't want to say stump coach, but tried to get something out of him on whether he knew with picture day being here, who the 2022 Ticats were and uh, classic coach O response there as mentioned sean thomas erlington was named a cfl top performer and caught up with him after practice on what that meant to him no not really i think we we um, we uh hold ourselves to a uh, very very high level high standard in our room we demand we demand a lot from ourselves from each other and then i think it just shows up when when game day arrives you see people like don jackson 5.7 average you see Wes West Hills when he runs with the ball how, how hard he runs and then obviously it just it just shows how, how hard we work it's, def it's definitely the pride also I think it's there's a competition in, in competition level and all of that I think we work we all work hard and it's it's a funny room to be a part of in the sense where we all cheer for each other but we're all working for this one spot on the team but even though that's the case we we still push ourselves and and are happy when guys guys get make those those performances. I mean, Coach JB is a great coach, all around coach. Through the years, he's been working with receivers, running backs, quarterbacks. Like he's he's all over the offense, but that's because it, it speaks to his knowledge of the game, and he's just he's just a, a, a great a great guy for us as as a person, but also as a co as a coach. He he doesn't let slide <laughs> and and that's that's how i like it that's that's fine with our room we we keep ourselves to a to a high standard and we we uh we love that he he makes us uh work that way i mean they've, they've been doing an outstanding job i think through i don't know I, I couldn't pinpoint the exact moment but in the last four weeks it's just been some huge pushes on the line the guys want to run a run block. They they love to see us run for so obviously they're excited. They're excited to go out and block when the run call is is made. They they just they they take it to heart, and they know that when when we establish a run game here in Hamilton, people, it's tough to keep up with us. That was Sean Thomas Erlington as we caught up with him after practice, uh, talking about uh, Coach Jared Baines, the running back coach in there, and also talking about the offensive line. Uh, speaking of the offensive line, it's something we asked quarterback Dane Evans when we caught up with him after practice. Uh, lots to get to with Dane, but the first question was the obvious one. How's the hand, Dane? Good. It's attached to my body. Um, I can move it. Um, feels fine. So we'll see every day it's gotten a little better. So um, I think just the never, like never give up. Like that's not who we are here. Like it's not, that's not our, even in our DNA. So Earlier in the season, things just weren't turning out the right way, and it wasn't for a lack of trying, like, obviously. Um, and now we've just figured out how to make those wins and make the plays that needed to correlate into wins. And we've just been steady doing it, and we just got to keep doing it. Yeah, no, it was great. Um, I was super proud of Matt. I mean, that's just what he does, right? He's the ultimate pro. He's ready like that every week. Um, and I know as being a former backup as well, like, sometimes you'll go – 13 weeks before you get to play again, but you got to be ready every week. Um, so it's one of the most unique spots in football. Um, but the greatest thing was like we had just established momentum 
and and then um, you know unfortunately got banged up, and he came in and was able to keep that momentum rolling. And um, momentum's always the best player on the field, so when you can keep it on your side, that was huge. Well, I mean, I think it does mean something. Like it's pro football, so no game is like really meaningless because anybody can tell you, you put bad stuff on tape, you're gonna be out. Um, but flip it, like Ottawa's playing for everything. There's guys over there that are playing to make it on their team next year or end up on another team. So um, if we walk into this game thinking, ah, oh, we'll just wait for Montreal next week, like we're going to get hit right in the face. And um, I don't I don't think that's really how, who we are. Like, will there be guys that get certain opportunities? For sure. Um, but I, I don't see that being us. I, I feel like everybody wants to play. I know I want to play and just keep it rolling, like you said. Um, but whatever the team decides, that's going to be what we do, and we'll, we'll do it 100%. I think it just shows you how tough he is. Um, obviously, we see that every day in and out of this facility um, on the football field and things he's gone through in life as well. Um, but, but when the fans and opposing teams get to see those moments of him making the catch and getting smoked and having three or four guys come after him as he's making a play, like um, that shows you right there that like he's, he's really like that. He's built like that. Um, and he's just a great player man and i think he's always been that way and now he's like had the opportunity to do it a couple times and he's just going to continue to do that they've been doing a phenomenal job man um they they just are all five working uh, really six all working together um i i think they're very clear on their communication um so there's very very small windows of error that could happen um they're all obviously really great players and right now they're just playing with a really good edge and um I think I think they know that every week the other team is going to bring it based on their D line and, and linebackers, and they, everybody wants to be the team to you know get us. And I think the O line takes that as a challenge, and uh, they kind of lead us as an offense. I tell them every week we go as y'all go. Um, as far as they want to take us, it's as far as we're going to go because nothing can be started without them. And that is Dane Evans, quarterback of your Thai Cats, as we caught up with him after practice, saying the hand is feeling good, and uh, it'll be interesting to see how much he plays this. Weekend and as always, full scrum is available at tiecats.ca. All right, for more on the Ticats as they get set for the Red Blacks to finish the regular season, very pleased now to be joined by the Hamilton Spectators, Steve Milton. And uh, uh, Milty, if I had told you after Labor Day, after the Ticats were three and nine, uh, that they would clinch a playoff spot even before the last week of the season, would you have believed me? No. Yeah. Any other questions? <laughs> That's it. Thanks for doing this. Uh, what I mean, what's what's been the turnaround? What's been the key? Uh, a few things here. Um, you, if you talk to the players, they'll say it's because of the cumulative effect of the kind of games of, that they were losing and what they were learning about themselves. The coaches uh, follow that line too, and I think that's part of the truth, but it's not the whole truth. Nothing but the truth. Um, to me. Um, the offensive line was a big difference. Uh, establishing some kind of running game, which has you know been, been, and part of that is the offensive line. Part of it is is uh, going to an extra blocker, depending on who whether what, who it is. Uh, but some kind of tight end, uh, hybrid, fullback back type of situations made a made a big difference there. I think uh, Hills being in there. I think uh, some better decisions by for the most part. He's had some backsliding, but but at, at times by Dane Evans, I think uh, the emergence of the confidence of Schiltz as as the backup and and a guy that he's he's not one B, but you know he's very strong two two A plus 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 plus, and I don't think you can possibly discount Seth Small and his influence on on just knowing that if you can reach midfield that it really only need one more first down and you're likely to get points except into the fear system wins they say they'd rather score touchdowns and who wouldn't but knowing you have the three in the pocket i've seen this team with that most times over the last uh, 20 years but the couple of years they didn't have it it changed everything yeah. uh talking about that offensive line i mean it seems to start and end with the one constant we've seen all season long on that offensive line and Brandon Revenberg. How, how, I mean, is, is it possible to understate just how important he is to the cohesiveness of that group? Maybe not the game in and game in out success. I'm glad, glad you qualified it that way. Louis, that's, 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 uh, that's the proper way I think to look at that. I think Brandon would be the first to tell you that he struggled early in the year. And part of that was in unfamiliarity with who everybody is around. And it's part of it is, uh, you know, um, uh, 
no Mike File or all of those kinds of things. I mean, it, 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 no Van Zyl. Uh, no Van Zyl, all of that. Um, sort of the maturity that's expected from a guy like him, and he's shown it. I think he's really grown into it. I think, but you're right, that's sort of that cohesiveness as the guy, the one mainstay. I mean, there's been a lot of changes and it's been a, a lot of it's happened around him because it, you know on that side uh but actually both sides there's been been an awful lot of changes and, and he's had to play with uh, the different tackles uh three different centers and he put, i think he played with four different centers the year before or three so, so he's got used there, to it yeah, seen, yeah you see, you've seen see some guys which get, is so weird and uh, let's get off on a yeah. tangent here which is so weird because how long was the center the most consistent spot on the football field for the Ticats. I mean, it was three guys in, in 12 years for a bit there, wasn't it? All good teams. Yeah. Take a look at that. Yeah. You take a look at teams that, you know, and, and take a look at the people who play multiple numbers of games and, uh, you, you know, like up over 100 and off a lot of them are, are right, either guard or center, right? And, and uh, yeah, it, 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 uh, it makes a difference. And, and that, that, that's another, another thing, too, is, it, is it getting used to different centers because they still have to make the calls even though a guy like Ravenberg would be the most experienced guy at least most experienced guy in terms of service to this team uh on the on the line um it it still is he has to get used to this to the centers and so do the centers have to get used to that and the different quarterbacks and different running backs and there's been a lot there's been a lot happening that said, if you look around the league, it's happening with most most teams that way too. Talking about the offensive line, talking about the defensive line. Yeah. Um, coach, real high praise to the point where he, he singled them out twice by name uh, for Wilcotts, one of the newest guys on this team who's, I mean, on a D-line that has so much experience that, that's that been missing games, Dylan Wynn, you know, Mike missed for the birth of his child, Ted LaRon's a little bit older. I mean, they have infused a lot of youth with some guys in that those spots and they've had to and 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 i don't think you can forget the 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 two canadian guys that have stepped kind of in the middle there too diallo and and yeah. had some big big plays he he got whacked you know but but uh you can see why he was an important guy to get a, a couple of years ago and and uh and even federico in there yeah. too as well and and i don't think you can also Ignore what uh, Mason Bennett has done this year. He's been able to go inside. He's gone outside. He's made some mistakes. There's been some growing things, but they've decided to live with that. And they moved uh, Okafor back, yeah. back, yeah. you know, to to play some defense. And he's there, listed as an offensive lineman as well. He started on defense, back to offense, and that. And he's sort of got enough on both sides of the ball now that he can help. But the defensive line. Uh, well, they're going to have to be really good, particularly when you get to the Montreal game, because obviously I think Stanback will be back. Uh, and well, he is back, but he'll also be in, in form, I think, by then. He hasn't been in form. so We're already looking ahead. How do you think the Ticats approach this week? Because I mean, Coach always says the next, the most important game is the next one. That's not the case this time around. No, it isn't. And, and it, that's it. they really bought themselves some time with this one. This is... What happened on the weekend just worked. I mean, it tumbled. It, the tumblers all fell into place the last two weeks, didn't they? Just yeah. perfectly. And and I, I, I think it's justified because the best of the three teams that were, were vying for that third uh, place in the East, and that would be Saskatchewan, Hamilton, and uh, Ottawa, by far the team that got hottest at the right time, by far is the Tiger Cats, right? I mean, just based on record. I wouldn't say that their play has been really great uh many of those games could have gone the other way but so because some of their losses early in the year could have gone the other way maybe there's some some evening out here right now but i think this weekend they probably uh we haven't talked to coach o about this yet as you and i talk here uh i think he probably would have to make sure that anybody who needs to get a little smoothness going let's see how long does hills go in it running back uh how long do you play so whatever you know some guys maybe just need to rest uh, some veterans to get in, but I think some people, particularly quarterbacks, you got to get them, make sure that the thing's going because the next week you're playing, you know, it's winner go home, like really winner go home, a, a must win. I, and but there's this is nothing new in this league. I mean, we've had teams have bye weeks, week the last week of the season, and go into the right. playoffs. I mean, the the divisional final. There's always that 
argument to be made. How much do you rest? How much do you play? The Winnipeg Blue Bombers decided to rest some guys once they locked it up. I mean, this is nothing new in this league. No, it, not at all. And 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 uh, it, it's always one of those things. Would you rather play? You know, as you say, it's, it's rest versus rust yeah. kind of thing. And uh, comes up every year. Yeah, and and this isn't a matter of rust now. I think this is a real specific case type thing. Mm. You're not going to try. There's two things, but you got to protect guys from getting injured, like key players. Number so one. yeah. And some players may not play at all because they can fit in. They, they're they nursing a few little of this. That. They, they know that they don't need the cohesion of playing there. But some of the uh, so-called, uh, and I'll use this in quotes because I think they're all skilled positions, but skilled position players, sometimes because a lot of that depends on who else they're playing with, particularly the quarterback. Uh, you, you really need to make sure that they've got that in a groove a little bit. So they may try to do that so that nobody sits out and uh, and Schultz I expect has to play because of that reason because he's going to be important against Montreal in one form or another. I, we don't know how that's going to shape up, yeah. but he's going to be you know if Dane hurts his thumb again or something like that. So uh, Lawrence Woods, uh, obviously a special season. Um, what have you seen from him as of late? I mean, he hasn't been getting those holes. Is it a coverage thing? Is it uh, have you seen anything in his game lately? Well, don't forget that every there's been an awful lot of injuries, right? And and and. and Special coordinator or special teams coordinators won't talk about this because they're used to it anyways. Every time there's an injury to starting 24, it affects special teams yeah. because of this trickle down effect. Who gets to play now? You can't use this person because now they've gone from from the gunner on on um, gunner is the one that comes down the field first, tries to contain, get forces them inside fast, makes the tackles. Um, if that's a receiver that suddenly gets promoted because of an injury to the starting uh, uh, 24, then you've got to make they, – they're always making those adjustments. But they've lost an awful lot of players who are mostly special teams type of players. And it's it's that's been part of it um, in the last little while. Um, or not last little while. I mean, the, no. the kickoff really won the that, that yeah. return. Yeah, I mean, really that was that game. was two weeks ago. Yeah, yeah two weeks yeah, ago, yeah. really won the game I against mean, we're, we're easy Saskatchewan. To we're yeah, quick to criticize here. and it's close. Yeah. You know, it's really close. I the think, difference between a five-yard return and a ninety-five-yard return could be one or two blocks here or there, and no penalty. Yeah, on it. That's the big thing about that return against Saskatchewan. There were no penalties on it, and there could have been. Mm. Everything was set up, but you also got a guy like Turnowski making three blocks on a play. Uh, that that kind of thing. So, I think it it they're one block away a lot of times because on the on that big return by by Woods there were also two or three blocks missed. Yeah. Right, one guy makes three, <laughs> and three guys miss one. Yeah. <laughs> so like, the math isn't adding up. There's still an equal number of players on the field. That's right, and so they so I think a, a big part of it here is to just make sure a you don't get penalties. No, sorry, b a you don't turn the ball over. That's the other part remembering that there had been, you know, Lawrence had had some fumbles. So <coughs> you can see him securing the ball more now. Yeah. And uh, and I think that's part of it. That can that can take away a little bit of your daring, yeah. right, when you've had those that kind of warning. And it's a good thing because that's the number one thing. Hang on to that ball. A turnover on a punt usually means you're really deep in your own end or, or, or a field goal. Um, that's part of it. And uh, T- Team-wide, I mean, turnover battle. I mean, Coach, they lost it. Yes. This week. Yep. And coach was quick to point out that it's not too often you lose the turnover battle and still win the game. There was they, something they else he was back. saying there, which yeah. is, don't do it again. <laughs> which again, it which to the point, you know. which to the point, it was a problem early. It seemed like it was getting figured out. Now it seems like they haven't played a perfect game. No. The perfect game's never been played. Coach has said that before. But I, since that game in Winnipeg, they haven't been that good since, I don't think. Right? No. Yeah. No. No. So I mean, say it, there's the potentials there of of that team that we saw. Well, there is for every team too. Yeah. When you're on, you, you judge a team by when they get on a roll. I mean, even some of the. I mean, sloppy's the wrong word here because it. it but the ugly, you don't care. I mean, there's a certain beauty in winning in in October football, and and however you do it, because the games get much harder to win. Either teams are playing for next year, or they're they're in it. They're all like playoff games in one form or another. Particularly when the Ticats put themselves in the hole that they did, which was three and nine, right? Yeah. So, so those final that final third of the season, which uh, they're just one game short of completing now, they're four and one, and and you would say other than the Winnipeg game, three of those were what you would call an normal early part of the season ugly wins. They're, that's okay right now, yeah. but but there's been some problems w- within those things. They've got to make sure that. Uh, that those problems don't overcome them, and they haven't. 
you know, they've been able to overcome those problems. I'll tell you one little concern I have right now is the penalty totals are climbing up again. Yeah. Right. I mean, there was a there was a two week span where I was thinking I don't recognize how undisciplined this team was. Yeah, yeah, and and it was just in that isn't not doing what the coaches says that's sort of like just not thinking on on missing some things and that's why as i say it was so huge that run back by woods that's basically set up which was the key yeah. key game against saskatchewan everything changes if they lose that game um and again i mean before we let you go melty we've uh we've made it this far into the conversation without yeah. even bringing up someone who will likely when the awards are announced be recognized for something maybe a big one uh tim white yeah. What a catch late. I mean, we talked about Matthew Schiltz with the scramble, but another huge play, clutch play by number 12 to set up the win. Yeah, he, uh, two weeks in a row, right? Yeah. And, and, and remembering, he got completely <laughs> clobbered on, uh, you know, on, yeah. uh, it, so, and hung on to the ball. Those ones, and, and, or, Orlando had mentioned that uh, the previous week that he has at times dropped those balls and and this and that means growth and that's what you want to see at this point in time is is a person's game changing a little bit um, I think he's uh, energized now and I think he there's been some real confidence from the from the uh, the catch that he made uh, uh, in the uh, Saskatchewan g- game and uh, and getting drilled and getting a two you know all of those kinds yeah. of kinds of things are really uh, coming into play uh i think he's got a feeling for both quarterbacks which is really important uh given that you may have to use both of them when you get down to the game that really matters which is montreal so um i think he's a guy that may play just a bit more depending on what kind of defenses they're playing against him do you want to give him a chance to to win a a couple of things i you know he's going to make the all-star team yeah i mean if he doesn't it's just a travesty (laughs) yeah it's a travesty yeah There'll be a West Coast bias uh, yeah. on that uh, one for sure, or at least West Division uh, bias. All right, Melty, I've taken enough of your time, so thank you for doing this. Appreciate it. Okay, Luke. Thanks. Bye. And my thanks to Steve Milton for giving me some time this afternoon here at Tim Hortons Field, and my thanks to you as well, because uh, if you weren't listening to the show, well, we'd have no reason to do it. So thank you, thank you, thank you. We appreciate it. We appreciate it in uh, week 21 just as much as we appreciated it in uh, week one of training camp. Uh, and right through the playoffs. As long as the Ticats are here, uh, we'll be here with you here on Ticats today. Uh, if you're on the Ticats Audio Network, why not check out a brand new episode of the Coach O Show with Luke Tasker. That's available now. And make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss an episode of this show or any of the other great shows we have for you. Uh, that'll do it for us. We are back tomorrow, same time, same place for the Ticats Audio Network. I'm Louie Butko. Hope you have a great day. Diecast today can be heard every weekday, and we would like to hear from you. Email us at gameday at tiecats.ca. Have a question or an opinion? We want to hear it. That's gameday at tiecats.ca. Subscribe to the Tiecats Audio Network on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts.